Hey everyone, today I'm going to talk about Laravel HTTP request or the request object. It will be covered by a couple of sessions. Firstly, today I'm going to introduce different aspects of the Laravel HTTP requests, especially how to retrieve input from the request. Let's straight look into some example. Now I'm going to create a new route in this project. I actually I have been using it for for many sessions. Say I want to have a new route with post method API transfer. Okay, so I'm going to reuse the message controller. Say transfer or rename it to message transfer. Okay, it makes more sense. Now let's go to message controller and add the function transfer. And we add the request parameter to the function signature. So we are going to return something. State and uh, no. Say param params. Here I want to return all the parameters or the inputs in the request. The most straightforward or easiest way is request input. Okay, now let's try to make the API call from Postman. And HTTP localhost API message transfer. Let's put something in the body. So it's a JSON request. Say name Alex age 12 location China. Okay. Let's send it and see what we can receive. Okay, uh, you can see the in the response, the params probably give us exactly the same input from the request. So this is the easiest way to get all the input. Okay, let's try to add something to the post request. So this is the query string we we have in the request. Say um, score a hundred and the cent. You can see here. So the score a hundred. This parameter is part of the the request URL. What we call this is what we call query string. So this parameter is also part of the, the input we receive or returned by the request input method or the function. So not only the, the request body, the JSON part, the block, also the parameters in the query string were also included in the input function return value. So this is what we want to introduce firstly. So it will return us an associative array. Okay. The next thing is, what if we want to exclude some of the, the parameter or input? We can use except. Say we don't want to return age. So the returned array will not include the age parameter or the input. 
Now let's see. Let's try the API call again. So the age is excluded from the response. Okay. What if we want to just access the query string? So we can use query function call. Now we can get we the query function will only return us the query string. The parameters in the query string. In this case, let's see what we can get. Just a score. So the query function only return us an array with the parameters in the query string. We can also limit that we only want to have the score parameter from the query string. Let's try again. And we add more, say, link ABC. We send. You can see here the what's returned. It's a hundred. So this is that. This is what the query function does for us when we pass a parameter score to to the query function. So it will look for the score parameter and return the value of that one. So in this case, it's 100. So that's why we can see in the response params, probably got 100 as the value. Pay more attention here. So in the query string, the only data or the parameter value is of type string. So it has no other types. Uh, Boolean, integer, or whatever other types. So this is why you can see in the response that 100 is a string, not an integer. Alternatively, if you do want to get the integer, there's one thing that you can use. Let me see. I haven't checked the document, so if it's Support it. Let's see integer if there's any function supported by the Laravel framework. Oh, probably not. So you can ignore it for now. So you may need to to convert on your own. Another thing is that when you are looking for a parameter from the query string, it might not exist in the request. Say. And parent. Right? It doesn't exist exist in the request, so it will give you null. Now you can give give it a default parameter. The in A, so this is something a default value to to, to that function. So when the parameter doesn't exist in the query string, they'll give you the default value. Go in slash a. Okay, this is the query string. You can also input find some parameter from the input specific parameter, say name, right? And let's see a name. What you can see here, the name Alex. So the name. <laughs> Is fetched from the request body. What if the name is also included in the query string name Bob? So we can see the, the priority in this case. So let's see. You still get Alex. So this is the highest priority. What if you have no name in the request body? You can see, okay. So Laura application will look for the parameter in the request body firstly, then query string. So this is the, the how it look for the input when you use input function on request object. Okay, this is the name and the parameter. The other thing I want to mention is that not only 
using input function or query function. There's another option you can choose, say, so we, we talked about collection class in previous video. If we use request collect, you will be given a collection instance rather than an associative array. Then you can use the, the function supported by the collection class to do a lot of data operation. Say, in this case, I will have a property in the request body, users. It's an array with name Alex age 12 name Bob age 11 okay so in this case I want to return just the names of the users we can utilize collection class to do the the map operation so in this case we can easily map each user in the collection to a name string so say here by the way you can get the subset of the, the collection so in this case it's users and the user in the callback or clo the callback closure we return user name and the, here is the names now we can replace the params value to names let's see if it works So here I need to change a bit. So this is because I was, so in the closure function or the callback, the user variable is not of type collection. So, or the a class, it's an array. So I can't use property. Instead, I need to use index, array index. A key should be name so in this case I can access the each user's name by the index or key name so this is how I, I can map the collection to name name string so it's an array then I can see yes so here I can get Alex and Bob instead if I want to get age list here ages ages okay now let's try it again yes the age 12 11 okay so this is what we can do with request HTTP request and how we can retrieve input from the request so there are a lot more useful functions or helper functions that are provided by the Laravel request. Okay, I think that's it for today. This is a very basic introduction on how we can uh, fully utilize the, the features provided by Laravel on HTTP request. I'm going to talk more about request in next few videos. So stay tuned. See you next time. If you feel it's useful, remember to thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.